Hello and welcome back to another episode of Glowing in Tech. This week we have part two of our episode with Ineni and it's going to be a juicy one so please make sure you let us know your thoughts on some of the topics that we tackle on today's episode. Sponsored by Makers. How did you figure out you wanted to do postgraduate work? Um, how did I figure out I wanted to do a postgrad? So after that I actually worked for a few other companies um, mm-hmm. doing different random different things but all within tech and um i actually created the tech over foundation yeah which was created from the tech over so mm-hmm. i'm on instagram now everyone's seeing me covid hits i actually left that automotive company as while covid was happening i was like yeah i'm not going to my mental state is already low i'm not going to take some more like foolishness no no, I'll figure it out. I'll I'll make websites for people. I'll make apps because I've learned how to do that as well. So I was like, yeah, I'll figure it out. So here I am. I leave, <laughs> I leave this company and I'm now freelance and I'm doing projects online. And during that time, I actually made an algorithm that was able to detect. Well, I say this very loosely. I created an algorithm that gave the illusion that it was able to detect beauty. So the way I kind of programmed this algorithm was that I fed into the, the data, the yeah, into the algorithm, a bunch of white females, the stereotypical kind of standard of beauty for someone that's in the UK. Um, I fed that into the system, and I gave that tag as beautiful, and then I fed other women from other races into that and gave them a lower count, which meant by the time the algorithm was finished and this facial detection algorithm was done. And it, let's say it's used for like a beauty app. And in that beauty app, it's like you want to see how pretty you are and how beautiful you are. Um, women who weren't white had a considerably lower percentage. And what that did is I was able to start conversations online or social media to show the dangers of like, you know, coding bias mm-hmm. and be like, listen, I pro- I know it's a bit out there to say this this person's beautiful this person not beautiful but this is an extreme case of the dangers yeah. of um not having a diverse amount of people in the room uh, from different backgrounds different ethnicities different socioeconomic backgrounds different just different people in the room even um different uh, besides genders but um different sexual preferences because who is to say that one person is beautiful and another person isn't beautiful but mm-hmm. well, if everybody in that room is a white cis male who is maybe in it, to them they're attracted to a, a white woman then of course a black woman's never going to be attractive using that app or using whatever that software is in uh so yeah i wanted to show the dangers of coding bias and um it kind of went viral yeah like a lot of people online were trying to talk about it and were curious about it and were asking me questions and some people really hated it like how dare you create an app that does this and blah, blah, blah. i was like well i wouldn't actually put this on the market now like yeah, this is yeah, this is all for educational purposes i just want to show you that there's a lot of apps that are similar to this right now and you don't even realize you know in america a black man that has never been to a certain state is being put in jail yeah. because a cctv camera that has a facial detection algorithm linked to it is saying that man created um committed that crime And you're just like, how do you, this man has never left this state. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But you believe this algorithm like over a man saying, look at my passport, look at this. I, this is where I live. I ain't got, I haven't gone nowhere. Mm -hmm. And he was able to be in jail for like how many days before they realized, oh, okay, he actually really wasn't here. To me, that's really ridiculous. So here I am, I just put this online and then I'm talking about it and people are loving it. And so um, an opportunity came up from the office uh, for students, I believe. And they were like, okay, do you know what? Um, If you're a person of color, especially, or a minority of any sort, and you feel like you want to be in data science and you don't know how to get into data science, even if you don't come from a technical background, um, you can apply to this. You can apply to do a postgrad, a master's in data science. So I just applied and there was a, maybe like 10 really good universities on that list that you could go to. And I applied and one of them was the University of the West of England. So I was like, oh, not me going back to my former uni. <laughs> oh, um, so like, this is like, I graduated in 2018 and I went back to uni in 2021. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go back to UE, why not? Um, and that's how I went back and did my postcard just because I used the algorithm that I created online and the traction and the way people responded to it as part of my application. And then that kind of went on to 
get me the the scholarship. Lovely. Yeah. And you spoke about like how that was part of forming what became the Tech Over Foundation. What was that? What was that like? What happened there? Yeah. So the Tech Over Foundation was me working for all these tech companies and just being fed up. I just felt like I wasn't respected. Um, even in the automotive company, there were times then I'd, I'd be asked to like do menial jobs, like grab this or grab that, like things that weren't in my job description. And I realized from talking to women and joining networks that it was um, a lot of them had the similar stories. Like there were senior engineers getting coffee. And I was like, yeah, no. I mean, one of the companies I worked for fired me because of my Afro. Like, what? Yeah, at the time. Um, and this is a big energy company. Ooh. Yes. Should I get LinkedIn? Mm. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't even put them up on, on LinkedIn. Sorry, I didn't even put them there because... I ain't giving them no spotlight. I did not work at that company. <laughs> I do not know who you are. No. <laughs> Absolutely not today. Yeah. Um, but yeah, big energy company. Very like they had the, when you, when you hear of them, you think that they're really progressive and they'd be the kind of company to embrace a black woman in engineering. But no, um, I got fired no. because of my Afro. And when I asked the lady in question from HR, who was definitely racist, definitely. I can't really blame the entire company, but this woman in HR who's hired to be in charge and like to support people was racist. So you can imagine the experiences for the people of color in that company. Anyway, um, she was, she just didn't even give me a meeting, nothing. She just fired me. She was literally just like, um, yeah, uh, you keep coming with your hair like this. I've told you um, it's not appropriate, blah, 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 blah. And that was it. That's incredible. And I was like, in this age. Wait, what yeah, was this, this was, um, mm, what year was this? I want to say that sometime between 2012 and 2016. Like that's how much I've blurred them out of my head. Yeah. Wow. Um, and I got fired and um, I didn't know my rights because I, I just didn't know that that was actually illegal to do. Yeah. I just thought, well, if a company don't want you, they have they can get rid of you whenever they, they want. Right. And I tried to beg her and everything. And she, she was like, she was, to me, I, I liked a nice, sweet. She was pregnant at the time as well. So I was like, girl, how are you this mean? And you got a kid on the way. Like, come on. Mm. Anyway, so she's um, well, I've been fired from this company. And um, but then after that, I kind of joined um like coding communities, like coding black females, yeah. girl, black girls in tech, other communities. And um, just from being around them and speaking to women in those communities, I realized, oh, oh, so you mean I, they can't do that to me? And like, well, obviously yeah. I'd, I'd left by this point. It was like so much like maybe a year later or something. So I'd left. And I actually went to another company where I got fired because my manager was trying to sleep with me. Oh, um, and I was man. like, I'm no. <laughs> and um they fired me, but because I knew my rights, because I was in these networks, I was like, ooh, you, you can't do that. You can't do that. So I was like, if I'm going out, I'm going out with a bang. I went around the entire company. I was like, do you, because he, he fired me on the premise that I don't actually work. Um, so I went around, I was like, hello, this department. Do you think I work or not? They're like, oh, you do all the work. You do more work than your manager. Like you're always, you do his work too. Like you're, this, this. I was like, can you actually write this down? And I put this in writing. They're like, yeah. So they, put their signature on it I said lovely went to another department what do you think about me do you think I work you're such a hard worker when everyone leaves at like 5 30 you're here to 8 p.m and like to be fired for like not working when you leave at like 8 p.m sometimes and you're wow, like I'm just like the what the audacity I was like what is going on so I, I did all of that I left made a big scene like uh, people are like oh where are you going oh I've just been fired so I, I will probably not see you again <laughs> and then I left and then I was like why are you so emotional about this and then you've got all these signatures call your manager's manager and ex tell him what's been going on and I think often because uh, my manager is a white man mm. I think often um when it comes to black women because we are like we don't want to we don't want to lose our job or be seen as difficult yeah. we just take it we're just like okay um my manager touched my bum but I need this job. I need this money. It's like, and where like it's so hard for me to get a job because of being a black woman. And people already like that. That's that. Um, what's the word? There's already that difficulty there. That yeah, okay, it could be worse. It's not. It's not that bad. I'm just gonna make excuses for it because it's it's not detrimental really to me. But you don't realize that stuff is really psychologically affecting you. Yeah. Every time something happened, I went back and spoke to the ladies mm -hmm. in my network. I was like, is this normal? No, it's not normal. And um. Yeah, so I spoke to my manager's manager and best believe the next day they rehired me back to that oh. company and slapped on some extra money. Oh. But um, they still didn't fire my manager. And they said that they can't afford to get rid of him. That's what they but, said to me. Was he that much of a value add? Like what was... Yeah, they said that he... Because they were, I guess, underfunded. I don't, I don't really know what was going on, but 
if he left knowing all that he knew it could have affected the company oh, on a wow. large scale yeah. and that happens very often where it's like a lot of women f- are forced to be silenced or they're yeah. paid off because i kind of feel like i was being paid paid off oh, in that wow. moment um and the only reason that they rehired me is because i was like i'm gonna sue <laughs> like i'm mm. suing all of y'all because this is wrong um and yeah and this is the danger is when it comes to being like if this was a black man we all know that he would have been probably even arrested mm-hmm. for what mm-hmm. for, you know but this they they just gave him a little slap on the wrist you have to go for some disciplinary training or something some managerial training mm-hmm. i went on a little bit of a tangent but that's just to give you a backstory of why i decided to start my own thing because i was like i want to be a voice for women i want to help support and the people who really really need it i've done like over 100 workshops where i was either like speaking in them or teaching or just supporting whoever was doing it so I'd been a part of so many things in the UK and in Europe that I was like okay I want to take what I've learned and how like all my training and stuff that I've done and I want to actually take this to places where the girls don't have access to any of this the girls are they're in university studying and they're dealing with lecturers who are like touching them up or just trying to you know like I want the people who are really in the situations where if I said to them we're going to find a grant and get you this amount of money or we're going to help you and support you they won't have to do things that would really put them in in really detrimental situations um and so yeah just before I actually graduated uni um my dissertation for the when I was on my robotics course my dissertation was um, inspired by me making a drone and um, Santander, Santander Bank actually sponsored the creation of that drone and they gave me prize money because I applied for a medical competition and won it with the drone so that once they've given me this money I used it I went to Nigeria um, flew the drone used the drone to deliver medication from a hospital to a village and I saw the like reaction of the people in the village and how much they loved like seeing the drone up in the sky and flying. And the young girls were like, you're so cool. I want to be like you. How do I do this? And I was like, this is where I'm meant to be. Like, yes, teaching in the UK. I love it. If you want me to teach, hit me up. But um, <laughs> but it's like there's there's actual areas where like the fact that the girls thought it was witchcraft. There needs to be like some core education done. Like it's, this is not even about like, oh, where do I want to do? Do I want to do UK versus Nigeria? No, it's like there's a lot more education and awareness that has to be done there because at the end of the day, I, I'm also Nigerian. I want my country to progress. And I, I don't want them to see drones and think that it's witchcraft mm-hmm. or anything like that. And I also want girls who are in these situations where their whole life they're taught that, you know, you're just going to marry a, a nice rich man and that's going to be your life and make sure you learn, you know how to cook, you know? like that, That's how a lot of the experiences of those girls in the villages um, would have ended up being um so just seeing the reaction and seeing it like oh I want to do this too how can I do this I was like yeah this is where I'm meant to be I want to be in countries I want to be in villages I want to be in regions wherever I want to be in spaces where I'm needed mm-hmm. communities that you know are underserved and um people often forget about so yeah um taking that and then years later obviously I've worked in all these different companies now COVID has hit. I'm like, I'm leaving this automotive company. I'm, I'm, I've had enough. And then, uh, uh, yeah, I'm like, okay, let me try and do my own thing. Arduino, a really amazing company, hit me up and wanted me to talk about the dissertation and the drone project and everything I did in Nigeria years before. So they hit me up. I'm like, can you speak for Arduino Day? And I was like, not the one of the biggest robotics yeah. companies in the world hitting up your girl Absolutely. because of Instagram. <laughs> so I was like, oh, listen, I'm not never going to hate on social media again. Um, and so they hit me up and I was like, yes, of course I'll speak. Uh, every person who loves robotics and wants to get into robotics starts with an Arduino. So the fact that like life has come full circle now and now I'm, you want me to speak for, on your Arduino day to thousands across the world. I was like, wow. So yeah, here I am speaking. I tell them about the experience and all of this. And I say to them, I really want to go back to Nigeria and do some more work like that. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where the interview ended. And then afterwards I was like, do you know what, Nanny? you're no stranger to writing emails and writing letters to people. I mean, this ha- that's how I go to uni the first time. So I was like, listen, I'm going to write another letter. So I wrote a letter to them on email and I was like, hi, Arduino. Um, I really want to do this. This is what I want to do. Thank you for having me on Arduino Day, but I want to help more. I don't want the conversation to stop here. What, mm. How can we do more together? I want to go to Nigeria and I want to do a workshop. Could you guys put it, like support or sponsor or be a part of this in any shape, way or form? And they were like, do you know what? 
we love you and we love what you're doing. We are going to sponsor you. And literally, I get to Nigeria and they sent so much hardware to Nigeria directly straight from, I think it was Italy. They sent so much stuff to oh. me, like thousands like of worth of, uh, of pounds worth of stuff. And I'm just like, ooh, like they really came through. And I was able to um, teach 50 girls who were affected by Boko Haram um, in the northern region of Nigeria. If you've not heard about Boko Haram, it's, there's a lot going on in the northern region of Nigeria and um, the young girls are affected and the, there's, they're always told that all they can do is like menial jobs. That's all they're going to mm -hmm. amount to. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's a lot of despair and a lot of like not a lot of hope. Girls in that region get kidnapped all the time, um, get sold for parts. Like it's really horrible what goes on in that region. And for me, I know it's like people have told me, oh, but it's not very safe to go there yourself. Like, why would you why would you put yourself in that situation when you could just have your nice little job here in the UK and just be cool and I was like because at the end of the day if a woman didn't go onto stage at the YWE awards and say this is what my struggle is and this is who I am now and blah 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 I wouldn't even be here mm -hmm. so I like I'm not going to not do something and not be visible and not represent for people that especially look like me just because people like say oh you shouldn't do it or it's yeah. not a good idea like I'm not gonna let that deter me mm -hmm. and so here I am they're like listen Nigeria's in the, in the red zone I didn't even know what the red zone was apparently there's some countries I like they're like don't go <laughs> and because of Boko Haram at the time this was one of those countries I was like I don't care I'm gonna go and listen me and God back to God <laughs> me and God we had that covenant he told me and I told him that we were gonna get girls into STEM. Um, so yeah, I went to Nigeria and I taught 50 girls. And it was, it, for me, it was such an amazing moment because those girls genuinely were great at like building the robots. Yeah. Like it wasn't even, a, like they've never seen robotics before. Um, for, to start the workshop, I was like, just make a robot out of like empty noodle boxes. So like they had like the cartons from the noodles. Mm -hmm. Indomi, shout out Indomi gang. Um, and they, they made what they thought a robot looked like and they all had the, the humanoid robots. Some of them made cars. I was really impressed. Some of them made clocks. I was like, hmm, I've never thought of a, a clock as a robot, but I guess it is automated, isn't it? So they made all these really cool things. I was like, wow. Like a lot of the girls haven't got a lot of formal education. Um, some of them were returning back to school after like working as prostitutes there was all kinds of really crazy stories and when I was speaking to someone girls, one of the girls travels two hours every day to school mm. just because she wants an education she's 11 wow. 11 I don't think I 11 I, I was thinking like that yeah, she's yeah, she yeah. two hours on her own all kinds of terrain god knows what can happen to her on the way but she's just like I want my education and anyway, so they, so I'm teaching them and they're learning so quickly and I'm seeing their eyes light up and they're all like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. Like, oh, let me try. And I'm just letting them do their thing. And for me, I was like, yeah, this is the start of the Tech Over Foundation. This is the birth of it. This is what I want to do. Um, and I think this is personally my calling. Um, this is what I was meant to always do. And yeah, for me, after that, it was the rest is history. I've been doing talks and workshops and different things, going back to Nigeria, speaking there. And this year we're going to the Philippines. Whoa. Yes, we're going, to see we're going to the Philippines. How would you say somebody from a non-technical background or somebody that's in engineering already, like how yeah. would they get into robotics as a career? Yeah, so if you're not from a technical background and you're interested in robotics, um, do not fear. <laughs> There's a lot of routes, honestly. And personally, I wouldn't have gone to uni. Like if I know, if I knew what I know now, I would not have gone to uni because robotics is very practical. It's very hands-on, which means that you can teach yourself. You know, all you need is the parts. And um, luckily on YouTube and a lot of like online resources, there's so many tutorials, so many um, things like making your own line following robot, making, I don't know, a robot that responds when you like clap, like a sound activated robot. There's so many different things now. So for me personally, if I wanted somebody to get into robotics and I'm, I'm talking to them about it and how all of that, I would say, go on to Amazon, go on to eBay. They have robot kits. These kits are like 20 pounds. There's no excuse. Y'all be going to dinner. You be taking your bay for food and you be spending 40, 50, 60 pounds. Listen, if you don't have 20 pounds, save it up, um, you know, work towards it and um, go on to Amazon. Amazon has so many robot kits and the beauty of these kits is they give you so many different parts from resistors all the way to motors to wheels. Um, so you don't have to stress about finding each individual component. Like back in the day, we had to be ordering from China and uh, yeah, <laughs> and waiting for weeks for like one part. 
but now it's all on Amazon. So I would um I would tinker about with electronics. Mm. I think that's always the best starting place when it comes to robotics. Play around with some um, electronics. Um, understand the physics behind it, how resistance works, power, all the ohm laws, stuff like that. And then from that, um, start looking at tutorials. There's a lot of um, things online. MIT has an intro to robotics course uh, that's free. Um, they have they even have an intro to computer science. They have a few things. Um, Harvard has one as well. Go to these top unis because you can put down your CV. You could say, listen, I, I did this intro to CS at Harvard and um, I completed it. And, you know, now I've got this on my CV. That's a still that's still education. Education is not limited to university or going being in a formal institution. Um, education is really what you make it. Like if you go online and you teach yourself how to do something on YouTube, that's education. So, yeah, do that. And in everything you do, make a record of it. That's the biggest thing that I wish somebody like nobody told me that in university. And we didn't even do that really in university. Um, have a record of it. It really costs nothing to have an online website. There's so many um, free, there's WordPress, you know, there's things. Have a record of it. If you don't know how to use GitHub, because GitHub, you know, is, it has its struggles, <laughs> you know. Um, GitHub is not for everybody. <laughs> uh, but you could just use WordPress and take pictures. If you successfully build a robot, or even if you don't, because in engineering, even if something fails, that's still a win. Mm -hmm. You still learn a lot from it. Mm -hmm. So take pictures, um, write a Word document talking about your process, how you went about it, how you did the design and um, upload it or keep it somewhere for yourself. But when you apply for jobs and you want to get into the industry, when it comes to hardware-based engineering like robotics, they don't care about your education so much. Yeah, it's nice to have a fancy uni on there, but they want to see that you can actually do the work. Can you, do you actually understand what resistance is? Do you un actually understand how wheels move and like how they work? Um, do you understand motors? They, they want to know that you understand the fundamentals and you can easily, easily, there's people I've helped to get internships in robotics who don't have like that formal education, but they have the passion and they've kept records of it and all the things that they do. And that's enough. Companies will hire you, especially for an internship or for mm -hmm. entry level role. Yeah. They will hire you. They'll be like, wow, so you mean you didn't and you can do all this? That's impressive. That's yeah. that's the kind of people need people that can do the job now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's why you see all these entry level like junior roles and oh, you, we want four years of experience. And you're like, excuse me, you're an entry level role. Why are you asking for this much experience? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, personal experience and that experience that you've got from your own time, maybe not industry, but it's still very valuable. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd start with um, start. OK, let me let me start from the beginning. So first thing you're going to do, go onto Amazon, save up some money, buy a robot kit buy an electronics kit, start tinkering about, start learning how like physics of, of all of this works. And then after that, you're gonna make a record. Even if your project doesn't work, even if you don't know what you did wrong and you get stuck, make a record. If you if you really, really get stuck and you're, you don't know what to do, Stack Overflow is your best friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody knows something about something on there. So try that. You got chat GPT now, there's yeah. no excuse. <laughs> there's, there's, there's no excuse. <laughs> um, and just create a record. And then when you apply for like entry level roles, Use that's your portfolio right now. Like that's your portfolio. That is you. That's that's actually your real CV. Use that and be like, hey, um, I know my CV is lacking a little bit. There's not like all the things that you would expect to be on there. But in my cover letter and in my portfolio, you can see exactly what I've done and what I've built. And you can see that I'm active and I'm I'm doing things consistently to make myself a better engineer or robotics engineer. And companies will love it. You'll be surprised. They they will really love that. Yeah, that's so good. I'm glad that it's becoming a lot easier or not easier, but like the the talent pool is widening in terms yeah. of who can and can't get in and yeah. the ways that they can do that as well. Cause yeah. yeah. And even to hear about hardware, like I've, I feel like I'm so in the software space that mm. I don't necessarily even consider that there are jobs in hardware. Yeah. And it sounds ridiculous because obviously like I use hardware all the time, yeah. mm -hmm. but it's really mm -hmm. cool to have that conversation and see like the opportunities that are available there because mm. Yeah, I don't necessarily think that it's that spoken about when you yeah. when you think of tech roles, especially like mm -hmm. sometimes you just go into data, you go into software, mm. but you wouldn't necessarily hear about hardware. Yeah, which leads me nicely on, <laughs> the next segment, which is my favorite one. <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> it's time for the tech tea. <laughs> we have a nanny, and she will be spilling the tea on something controversial. Within okay. the tech industry, what's it today? Hmm. When people say that we need more women in engineering, 
they are very rarely speaking about hardware. Mm. Very, very rarely. Even when they give you stats and they're like, oh, we have like this percentage of women in engineering. Y'all know you're talking about software. You only talk about software because the women in hardware, do you know that there isn't even a record? There's actually no stats for how many women are in hardware engineering in the UK. <laughs> you should see Amber's face right now. <laughs> like, it's so ridiculous to me. What's the ridiculous. percentage for like women in engineering? I think it's like 17.5. It's not even a great number. It's, no, it's still quite low. 17%. Yeah. yeah. But listen, maybe like 0.2% is hardware. So <laughs> like, um, yeah, and for me, it's like, I love all the initiatives because even before, like a couple of years ago, women in software was a struggle too. Yeah. yeah. So like, I'm I, I'm not hating on the software babes. You know, I, I love y'all. <laughs> I ain't hating on y'all. But um, yeah, like there needs to be more work as well to get women into hardware because especially when it comes to hardware, there's such a negative stereotype of women can't build and women can't lift and women can't do this and do like physical things re regarding hardware that it's like why is this there who who came up with this listen my name is nenny the builder <laughs> that's that's what I, I literally go around calling myself like bob the builder nenny the builder yeah. because th that stereotype of women i've seen some women that are doing some crazy thing like landscaping and like i said welding and things like that and we've been conditioned to think that that's not a woman's job and that a woman can't do things like that is oh, that's that's for the men. Yeah, well, why would a woman be welding? Why would a woman be working on the car? You know, yeah. why is but why is that so weird? You yeah. know? Yeah, it's kind of like it's almost like you've got the double stereotype. Not only is the like women can't do computer science, but it's also the women can't build or do physical labor yeah. jobs. So yeah. And is it even physically intensive? It's really not. It's really not. Well, I can't lift lift a resistor. <laughs> like, like, you know what I mean? Um, and in this day and age, even if you have something really heavy to lift, even for men, they wouldn't make the man lift it because next thing you know, you're getting sued. These companies don't—they don't, don't want to be like—they don't want to be sued. Yeah. So they—they yeah. they have things oh, that like gosh, forklifts gosh. and things. Yeah. yeah, like they have things to support you as well that can aid you in lifting heavy things if you need to do that. Yeah. So that whole stereotype that's been put out there that all oh, women can't build from it really irks my soul and i meet so many girls who actually got into engineering from building things whether that's lego or whether that's like just playing around with like things that you can assemble um that's how they actually got into engineering and wanted to be an engineer but they just didn't study a hardware st uh, subject i think as well the lack of women in hardware engineering specifically means that there can be like even more like a lack of exactly innovation in that space exactly and so when I saw your nail project, ah. ooh, let's talk about that. <laughs> I was like, wow, ooh. like, was it, not only was it- else now. <laughs> no, 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 not yeah. even like- Don't not, have them not right only now. Was it incredible, <laughs> but like, I don't know, it's just like mind blowing that you managed to combine like a really feminine, like something that people do a lot, getting mm -hmm. their nails done mm -hmm. with that tech side and like your building. So yeah, do you want to tell us a little bit more yeah, about that? Oh, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, you might have a video. Um, oh yeah, for a picture. Yeah, Ooh, <laughs> your, your editor working overtime. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so again, just like going back, just off the point that we just made about like women in hardware, and there not being a lot that you can see and stuff like that. Like I said, back to God. You listen, I'm a <laughs> devout Christian. Back to Jesus. Back to God. I made that covenant, and I said to myself, okay, I need to get more girls into STEM. What's the easiest way that you can get like the typical average girly girl into like be interested in technology? Mm -hmm. Combine it with things that she already loves and she already likes and are useful to her life. So I was thinking, okay, Nanny, what do you like to do? What's the like most girly thing that you like, the thing that you used to spoil yourself? I was like, I do my nails. So I was like, okay, okay, what, what can we do with nails? And I was thinking and thinking and wearable technology for me has always been something I've really mm -hmm. kind of resonated with. Mm -hmm. And um, actually when I was working for the automotive company, um i learned about linux and like data uh, packets and things like that just like just how data and um more so data but just how data is transferred from one place to another and a little bit about like bluetooth a little about like wi-fi and 
the science behind it because I, I just never had any reason to know about like how the internet and things like that work. So now I've had this knowledge and I understand um, connections and networking a bit more. I was like, okay, let me test myself. Let me, let me look into it. As I'm doing some more research, I look into NFC and I'm near field communication. I'm like, ooh, this is like Bluetooth, but like a different variation of Bluetooth. You know, it's not, it doesn't have as much range as Bluetooth, but there's a lot of instances where you could apply this technology. And I was like, what if you could pay for things with your nails? Like I was just sat there one day and I was like, and then you always lose your card. Shout out to the ADHD gang. Hey, like I always lose things. And so I was like, I always forget where I've kept them. So I was like, what can I do to, you know, um, I like my, I like, I like getting nails done and I, and I lose my card all the time. I lose my keys. How can I integrate the two? And I, it just came to me. I was like, you know, what if I could pay for things with my nails? And so I did some research and people had like LED nails where they put like, um, they've put LED into NFC stickers wow. and they like, you could just like, your nails will light up when it, it's near like oh. an NFC device. And, and I was like, oh, this is quite cool. But I was like, mm. I want to like elevate this. What can I do to make it a bit more fancy? And that's where the paying for stuff came in. And I was like, if I put my bank card in my nails and my nails are semi-permanent, they're here for like four weeks or something. I'm never losing my nails. Like yeah. they, they aren't there, you know? Um, so I was like, yeah, just do it that way. And so that's how the project came about. I found a really, really um, amazing factory in Guangzhou in China. And they and I told them about what I wanted to do. They already did LED nails. So I was like, what if we just collaborated? Like, you already have the technology. You have the printer to be able to do this. I'm going to do some design. I'm going to go online and do some hardware design and, and kind of recalibrate the circuit that you already have. If you're okay sharing your designs with me for the LED, I'm going to take that and I'm going to recalibrate your circuit and try and fit in an actual data chip into that as opposed to just an so LED. Cool. <laughs> so for like four to six months, me and this company, this factory, we just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it's crazy because I already like did work in uh, Guangzhou just from Anime and Chill, which is the, oh, the anime company. Yeah. So we had anime merch where we do like anime durags and anime bonnets. <laughs> so like they were already making stuff like that in the neighboring factories. So it was just me talking around and speaking to people like, oh, this factory does electronics. And I found out they did LED nails. And so... They shared their, their designs with me. I was like, oh, you must really like me because yeah, this is like top secret. And, and then, yeah, so I recalibrated it a bit, played around, spoke to a lot of networking engineers, had a lot of support, and then ultimately w was able to put a data chip in there too. And then um, the, sent the design to the company. The company printed it with their NFC sticker printer, uh, which means that you can basically have any circuit, but super flat. Mm -hmm. And then... Yeah, it being super flat and being a sticker meant I could actually stick it on to my nails and then build an acrylic nail on top of that. Wow. And then it's protected. It's like in the casing, right? So it's not it's not going anywhere unless you break your nail and then sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But it's not going nowhere. And, and that's how the nail project came about. That's so that's cool. So cool. Yeah. So do you, can people buy that? Like what's the whole situation surrounding that? Do you know what's crazy? Um, at the time when it when I first dropped it, because I've seen so many people on TikTok now and, and I'm like, oh, this is where I'm kind of like, I should not just focus on Instagram. I should have been yeah, on, 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 the, on the TikTok, mm -hmm. on the clock app, because I see people like getting thousands of followers yeah. off LED nails, like just doing like similar projects. Um, but I still haven't seen anyone pay for stuff yet. So I'm thinking, do you know what? I could really like patent this and do some real work with oh, this. Yeah. But there's you also, yes, exclusive. As a fellow um, ADHD babe, I would actually need that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> shout out to the ADHD. <laughs> but um, yeah, the reason I, I didn't when it first, when I first made it was because there were, there's people who are doing it already. It's not, it's not really a unique idea, but the fact that I've combined it, I think that's what made it unique. The fact yeah. that I've combined it in the way that I did. And then there's also a lot of regulations and laws surrounding actually pulling bank cards and putting that that into your nails so um if i was to sell and i i'm very close to you know i'm working with a brilliant nail designer called no for nails we're working on something so you exclusive um exclusive, exclusive. you heard it first on glowing in tech podcast <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. um so me and no for nails are working on something we may also be working on a robot that does the nails too <gasps> super exclusive wow. listen listen if you need um 
people to test it on. Yes. I, I mean, I'm looking at your nails like, yes. <laughs> Your blank <laughs> your blank canvas right now. There's there's so many possibilities you're right now. You're you're right, ready to go. Your face. <laughs> 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 Not them hearing us laughing into the pod. Uh, but yeah, so um, we're working on some stuff and um we're gonna do all the proper legal stuff behind that as well to just make sure and also the factory in China that I have to make sure that they ain't gonna try and sell it, you know. Yeah, um, that's a good point. Um so that there's a lot of legal things that we're kind of doing in the background but um i don't think it's going to have a bank card attached to it i don't think there's going to have a payment system but i will set up the nails we're going to do press-ons i will set up the nails in a way that you can if you know how to do it if you know how to program it you can put that onto your your nails yeah so i'm going to give people the option rather than myself do it because i'm not ready for no barclays and no santander to be like what are you doing mm. <laughs> you know mm. and obviously with anything with any type of technology there's a risk you know next year you don't want crime to come from that where it's like chopping off people's fingers to get the nails and Oof. you know there's just that, yeah. but that's like anything right you don't you don't want to that risk um so i think with tech you always have to think of like the good and bad absolutely so, absolutely yeah. but yeah in in tech as well mm. you're at the frontier of the innovation in this i love all the fashion tech oh, stuff you do you. so um yeah i think it would be great if you could tell people where we can follow you yes. oh yeah okay so you know i told y'all instagram is my bag um my online alias on everything i'm the tech over so t-h-e-t-e-c-h-o-v-e-r um and you can pretty much find me there like i put up things i get up to i'm gonna start vlogging very soon so i'm gonna join y'all on youtube <laughs> gonna be doing a day in the life of a robotics engineer and stuff like that because oh i really want to increase I representation wait. yes <laughs> I <can't wait. laughs> and i have a film coming out soon um hopefully in 2025 2026 um but yes i'm doing that with support from channel 4 and we are parable and the film is called stem it's about scientists, technologists, engineer, mathematician, four black women working in London, navigating life, love, and career. So it's like, if you if you like Sex in the City and if you like Hidden Figures or Girls Trip, it's a mashup of all of that. Love that. So okay. stay tuned. Stay tuned. We're staying tuned. Okay. <laughs> Thanks yeah, so much. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been amazing. Thanks so much for listening to another episode of Glowing in Tech. We hope you enjoyed listening. And we wanted to share some of the community comments that we've had from last week's episode. Shout out to Code Funhouse, who said, we absolutely love this. Dream big and execute with hard work. Very inspiring. And then he does so much work and it's so important. And the fact that she does so much that's visible too means that she's able to inspire others to be able to do the same. We really love to hear from you across our social media channels. So make sure that you do comment and let us know your thoughts on anything we've spoken on today. Thanks so much and see you next week. Available on all major podcast platforms.